What do you want to say? Hi kids at Junior Church. Hi, it's really good to see you. Happy Easter. We're just here to bring you a short little message and show you a craft you can be doing. Do you want to say anything, Jackson? Yeah. Thank you for my presents. Oh, did you get presents? Oh, don't know where Jackson got presents, but that's good. Or maybe he's saying it in faith because he's hoping for some Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. Okay, guys, so it's Easter. And at Easter, we celebrate the absolute wonderful thing that Jesus died for us and then he rose again. And we celebrate him rising again on Easter Sunday. So imagine a world where... Um, you wouldn't know anything instantly like you know now. Now when something happens, we hear it straight away on the news or maybe someone writes it on Facebook or Twitter. Um, sometimes we know about things when they're happening instantly because we get live coverage. But in, when, in Jesus' time, actually, things, the only way people found out things was by people telling them. So imagine if you were one of Jesus' followers and someone came to you and told you that Jesus was no longer dead and that the tomb was empty. Would you find that easy to believe? Would you need to go and find and look for yourself? Or would you just believe it as true because you knew Jesus? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read um, the resurrection story. Um, and I'm going to read it from this Bible, which is a children's Bible. Um, and I'm going to read it from Luke. So if you have a Bible, you could pause the video in a minute and go and find it so you can follow on or you can just listen to me. And I'm going to read it from Luke 24, verse 1, and I'm going to read all the way to verse 12. Okay, so it says, Very early on the first day of the week, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They brought the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance of the tomb, and they went in. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about it, two men in shining clothes suddenly stood beside them. The women were afraid. They bowed their heads to the ground. The men said to the women, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for the dead. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the death. From death. Do, do you remember what he said in Galilee? He said that the Son of Man must be given to the evil men, be killed on a cross, and rise from the death on the third day. Then the women remembered what Jesus had said. The woman left the tomb and went, and, and told all these things to the eleven apostles and the other followers. These women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, mother of Jesus, and some other women. The women told the apostles everything that had happened at the tomb. But they did not believe the women. It sounded like nonsense. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, and he looked in, and he saw only the cloth that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. Peter went away to be alone, wondering what had happened. Okay, so that is the story of when the women went to the grave and the grave was empty because Jesus had risen again. And when he rose again, he conquered everything. He took the keys back and he conquered death and he conquered sin and he conquered shame. And so it is such a good thing to celebrate um, today. That is why we celebrate Easter Sunday and um, it's why it's such a, a joyful celebration. And normally we would be in church and it would be loads of, um, fun and joy but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate where we are at home too okay so here are some questions to think about so how does this is what you have a little chat with your mums and dads or whoever's looking after you how does Jesus raising from the dead affect you does it affect you now how does it affect you and the other question is do you believe that he did raise from the dead and what difference does it make that Jesus rose from the dead? So a few little questions um, that you can think about and talk amongst yourselves about. Now's time for our craft. And for today, we are going to make, or attempt to make, an Easter garden. Okay, so, basically... You need anything you can find for this Easter garden. And what an Easter garden really needs is it needs some sort of grave. So it could be a cup, it could be anything, and it needs a stone that can be rolled away. So that's what you need. You could make it out of anything. So what we've done here is we have been in the garden 
um, me, Bessie and Jackson. Come in the shop, you two. You're both out in the shop. Mm. There we go. We have been in the garden searching for bits. But, you know, if you don't have a garden, you could also, on your daily activity walk, collect bits to make your Easter garden too. So what we've got here is we've got... I found a dish in the in the cupboard. And, and, we've, a cup. and we've got a cup. I think I had another cup out, but it's just a little plastic cup, this is. Um, yeah. And we have a cup, and we covered the cup with a mound of soil so we've made it like a hill can you see so we just got the soil out the garden nice messy job <laughs> okay so i'm going to pop this down for now this is the beginning bit of our easter garden and then we've been collecting things to put in so we have got grass grass yes so bessie's been cutting grass so what we're going to do i'm going to turn the camera down a bit so you can see us we're going to make we're going to decorate somehow lots of grass <laughs> The grass stuff. All over the Easter garden, so it looks a bit... So the Easter garden basically is um, like a model showing oh. Jesus' empty tomb, okay? And, and there's loads. If you look up on Google, you'll see loads of really beautiful Easter gardens. But if you can't do it with outside stuff, you could make this with um, stuff from your house. So you could do it with toys. You could do it with... You could do junk modelling, so you could do it with maybe, um, flowers, should we put the flowers, we could put the flowers up like this and make it look like a garden, there we go. So you could do it with junk modelling, you could oh. do it with Lego, Lego would work really well because you could make a really good, um, uh, don't pick the bits off Bess, she's just destroyed one of my daffodils. Um, uh, and let's put this here, so yeah, you could, yeah, sorry, Jackson come back up and I'll bring yours over this side, so can you pass... Jackson's blue bucket over, please, Bessie. Um, He'll fill the stone. Yeah, that's perfect. So, um, yeah, you could do junk muggling, you could do Lego. I've probably repeated myself a about a million times. I'm definitely not auditioning for Blue Peter. Um, so, we see we've. we've <laughs> they always do craft on Blue Peter, don't they? So, see how we've put some flowers here, we've put some grass. Jackson collected loads of little stones. Let Jackson do it, Bessie. And we're going to put that in the front here. Ooh, one went into the grave, so we're going to put all the little stones. And he also picked some daisies to put in. Don't go and pick all the beautiful flowers out of your mum's garden without their, her permission, your mum and dad's garden. That's why um, So I did the picking of the daffodils. I'm going to put these little stones in the front there. There we go. But daisies, I think, are all right to pick. Ooh, it's getting very chaotic here, isn't it? It's nice, though. So then... We've got this rock. Now, this was the biggest rock we could find in the garden. This would fit in front of the grave, and it's like the rock that's been rolled away, so it can go at the side of our grave there. And then we, I also made some crosses, because sometimes in the Easter garden, you see three crosses on the mound, so this would, like, shows the crosses that Jesus was on and the two thieves, the criminals, beside him. So we just used, to make these, we just used twigs from the garden. So we put these in up here. Mommy, you little, the little stuff. There we go. Yep, there and there. Ooh, and our man's collapsed in. There we go. Ooh, it's all right. We've got grass and daisies everywhere. It's chaos. And there you have it. <laughs> An Easter garden. So now what you can do is you can act out the scene. So ooh, there's an angel. Bessie's put a little Playmobil angel in there. We've got some little ladies that we could find. I'm not sure why she's dressed in a bikini, but they can come down and look for Jesus. They couldn't find him. And then there were two men, two angels, to tell them that Jesus had risen from the dead. Oh, and you can play with your garden. So have fun. We don't need that. So have fun and make it any way you can. And any way you make it will be absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so we have a prayer activity for you to do. Um, what you need to do is, as a family, find some pieces of paper, and on those pieces of paper, write down people that you'd like to pray for. So they could be people that do not know Jesus. Um, so people that you might know in your wider family, or your friends, or it might actually be people that um, you want to pray for them to have healing, or anything like that. So think of people's names and write them. 
then get somebody to hide them all around your house or wherever you are. And then you can go on a prayer treasure hunt. So as you go, you find one of the pieces of paper that's been hidden, you look at the name, and then you pray for that person. And then you go and find the next person, and look at the name and pray for that person. Have fun.